welcome to Stitchy Talk. Today we're going to talk about variegated floss. Actually, not variegated floss. We're going to talk about hand dyed floss. So, um, if you look here, I picked a skein that was very variegated. So, two, Cupid has a lot of variegation in it. So, I picked this one to do a demo just to kind of show you the difference. And it has a lot of variegation, whereas like pumpkin harvest doesn't have as much. So I'm gonna talk through what I did and the difference. So the way that I stitch is I use the loop method, which I'm gonna show you in a little bit, and I stitch in rows. Now, even though this is not the way you're supposed to stitch, I still have variegation. Now that's probably because it's Cupid and it has a lot of variegation. So. This is one way to stitch. So this is where you start with the loop method and then I stitch in rows, meaning I stitch half the stitch this way and then half the stitch of this way. Now, this method, I did the loop method where I start with one strand, fold it in half, and I did each square one at a time. So each X before I move to the next one. And I just went this way and then down and around. Now the tail method is where you start stitching and you stitch over your stitches. This is in rows and this is one X at a time. So if you look at this, the most variegation is with the tail method one X at a time. And that is what Cheryl does. That's how Priscilla stitches. That's how Lori stitches, Chelsea stitches. That is how you are supposed to stitch. But I find that this is quicker. So this is what I do. I'm gonna demo each of them so you can see. Another thing I wanted to show you is this method, the tail with the rows, you end up with the most thread left over and you have the least amount with the loop method, which is kind of surprising to me. And then, so yeah, if you wanna use the least amount of thread, like if you're short on thread, I would do the tail method with rows. So I'm gonna demo each of them, and I'm gonna use Pumpkin, pumpkin Harvest just to do a different color. Um, thank you to Donna for the super chat. And then Pamela says, uh, Kimberly, I watched a video organizing her sewing room and she uses a brother label. Does anybody know which one? Yes, Ashley can send you a link to it. That was my birthday gift a couple years ago from Lori. So let's talk about the loop method versus the tail method. So the loop method, you take one strand out, loop it together, and that makes two strands. And to start the loop method, I'm gonna use Lori's glasses. So to start, you create this loop on the back. You go in the loop, and then I kind of wiggle it so it's in the center. So that's starting with the loop method. Now you can do rows, and to do the rows, you would just do one, you do half. So I'm gonna do 10 stitches across. So this is rows. So you guys can comment and let me know. I'm gonna first ask if you do the loop or the row. So then I'm gonna go back across the other way. Okay. 
I used a tail with rows except for trees and plants, then tail with one X at a time. I am going to show you guys examples of some stitching, but basically this is just to show you when you start, you can either use the tail method or the loop method. And when you stitch, you can do rows or one X at a time. It's up to you what kind of look you want. And my stitching's not perfect because I don't have my Halo Go light out. So this is a loop start with rows. And then I'm going to kind of go under and cut this off. So that is loop with rows. And then, now if you're doing DMC, it doesn't matter or a solid fabric or solid thread like NPI, it doesn't matter. But this is for floss that is hand dyed. Now I'm gonna do a tail with rows. So I'll move this one. So the tail method again, you pull one strand out. Michelle says she's always used the loop method. Yeah, that's what I do. I like the subtle variegation loop of the loop method stitched in the rows the best. Oh, awesome, that's what I do. Oh, Valeria Bauer, you are the best. Thank you so much. Okay. With fancy floss, I start with the tail and do one stitch at a time. With DMC, I do loop with a row. That's probably what most people do, if I had to guess. Okay, so, oh. I did the wrong thing. I did the wrong thing. Okay, so tail method. With the tail method, you keep your threads together. So you're gonna pull one strand, pull the next strand, and you keep them together. You wanna keep your threads together because that keeps the variegation together. But I, that one I only had two strands, but I did separate them and put them back together so that there would be less knots. So what you'll do here is, start, and then on the back, I try to go over about five stitches. Pull this through. And then I kind of pull it just a little bit to make sure it's secure. And then the next few stitches, what I'm gonna do is stitch over that on the back. So that is creating a tail. And let me know if you have any questions, any tips. But I was, I, it was interesting that the tail row use significantly less floss. So now that I've got that done, I'm just going to stitch like normal. So five, six, seven, and you'll see that when I'm stitching this, when I do the rows, it's going to be much quicker than when I do one X at a time. So, also with the loop method, because you fold it in half, you have less thread on your needle, which could be good or bad. You might like that, you might not. It kind of just depends on your preference. Um, Rhonda says she can't answer the poll since she uses both methods depending on the thread. Since I want the variegation to show, I use the row tail. Yeah, that's what I think most people do. So thank you so much for answering. So most people probably do tail with hand dyed and then loop with DMC. Oh, 61% of you stitch with the loop method. 
Oh, I think we did the poll wrong. Because the poll should have been loop or tail and then row or X. Okay, let's do the let's do the poll again. The poll should be loop or tail. And then we'll redo that. Okay, so and right there you can kind of see I pulled those a little too tight. You can see that. You can probably can't really tell that in person. So that is row method. Now we're going to do the loop 1x at a time. Why can't you pull the two strands at the same time? You can, but um, they'll get tangled. And I always get knots. So if you separate the thread, put them back together, you will get less knots. Yes, absolutely. The Danish versus the English. Um, I'm gonna have to look that up because I don't remember off the top of my head. So here I'm gonna do loop, but I'm gonna do one X at a time. So this takes longer because when I first start, I can put my, I can do that and that skips kind of a going back and coming back through. So, but from here, I have to go all the way back down. But I am gonna show you it's easier to do left to right rather than right to left on this. So we do have a video of the Danish versus the English method. The English is one stitch at a time, like we're doing now, and Danish is half stitches and then recrossing them, which would be the row method. And then in the December Stitchy Talk, we're gonna just do a Q&A where y'all can come up with some cross stitch questions and we can see if we have like samples that might demonstrate. When I stitch, I use two threads in rows because threads have a map and the loop method, they tangle more. That is true. Uh, the loop method is supposed to tangle more. I mean, yeah, but for me, if I start getting tangles, I just use Lori's thread conditioner. Um, yes, and the loop method only works with an even number. It wouldn't work with three strands. It would only work with like two, four. Okay, so now I went left to right. Now I'm gonna go right to left. And you're gonna see that I can go faster right to left because I can do both at the same time. It's just quicker. And then I'm gonna show you a little tip. Now my stitches are not like super perfect here because I'm not using my Halo Go, so they're not usually this sloppy. But this is more just the method. So you can see how much faster that is. But I'm gonna show you a little tip when I get to the end of this row. Okay, so if you wanna go like on that second row, now my stitches aren't perfect, but that's fine. If you wanna save time, flip it over and then you can stitch right to left quicker because it's quicker. So that's one tip. Now that's if you're right-handed. So that would be the loop method 1x at a time. I'm gonna finish this off. Since you're using two 
threads for the tail method and one for the loop since you have another thread left from the loop method so the loop method uses less thread actually the one that used the less thread is this one the tail with the rows for some reason um piggy did not go trick-or-treating last night he barks a little too much lately okay now we're going to do tail method one x at a time so this is where you pull two strands and then keep the start with the same one when you do one complete x at a time and get to the end of the row do you end or start going back the other direction so you start going back the other direction does your right finger get tender no this one doesn't but right here i have a huge callus like it's super um Is there a best way to pull apart the thread so it doesn't get knotted up? Yes, one strand at a time. So now I'm going to do the loop method one X at a time. Okay, so 68% of you use the loop method. That's interesting. And then thank you to Janet Buster for the super chat. And then um, let's do a method. Do you stitch in rows or one X at a time? Oops. Too fast. I'm just trying to push that down with my thumb. And then I'll do one X. This one's a little bit harder to start because you have to Go over it a little bit more. So you're going over it. It just takes longer than the row method to start. Okay, now that I've got four, I'm gonna just clip this and I try to clip it right there. And then the same thing. Now, if I wanted to, I was going this way. If I wanna go faster, I can just turn it over and go right to left rather than left to right. And I think, um, really, I would say stitch whatever way you enjoy the most. So that those are my tips today. I'm going to kind of show you again. So this is one stitch at a time. You get the most variegation with um, the tail method. And that just means you're gonna get a stronger dark, a stronger light because those strands stay together. You get, a, you get less variegation one X at a time. The loop method, the rows, 
the row method using the loop or the tail, you would get uh, more variegation with the tail, meaning there's more darker and lighter spots. And then, so if you look, see tail, tail, loop, loop. When you look at the, the tail method, which is where you start with those, with your threads together, you can see you get bigger, lighter, and darker spots. When you do the loop method, you get more of like an all over variegation. So you still get a variegation, it's just different. And I'm gonna show you now some examples. And um, I wanna see the end of the poll real quick. Depends, oh, that's, that's a good one, depends. That's a good, that's a pretty accurate answer. So this is a pattern called Farm Life that we came out with a couple years ago. And on this one, we used uh, variegated floss and we picked skeins that had a lot of variegation. And you can really see, um, another thing to think about is, are you gonna stitch vertically, which is this, or are you gonna stitch horizontally this way um and the same thing here this one is vertical and this was all stitched with the tail method one x at a time oh quilty b says nothing messes me up than turning my work upside down yeah that'll do it um so that's an example of a lot of variegation and a lot of like color movement I do prefer to go left to right, right horizontally rather than vertically. This next one is also the same thing. We picked floss that had a lot of variegation and Cheryl stitched this one. And when Cheryl stitches, anytime you see Cheryl's work, it is always the tail method no matter what. And it is always one X at a time no matter what, even if it's DMC. I think. And then um, this is horizontal. Her flowers are horizontal. You can really see that. Now, one thing to think about is when you're stitching, if you're stitching a door, do you want the door to look horizontal or vertical? If you're stitching a pumpkin, do you want those, do you want it to be horizontal, vertical? If you're doing a flower, one thing you could do is you could outline the flower and then kind of go in a circular motion and then you'll have less of stripes so there's lots of things you can do um so that's what i have today and then i'm gonna answer any questions let's see arlene valor says how do you bring joy to your stitching and not have it just be work uh that's some days is better than others so this weekend i haven't stitched one time since last wednesday that's because we have a special guest tomorrow and i didn't have to so what i did is i used that time to quilt and i made i think 73 quilt blocks or something like that in three days so i'll i'll if i get bored of one craft i just go to the other but then like now my goal is going to be i have to do that whole row of the top of quilty love but i think i can do that in two days so that'll be um fun so um i just switch from craft to craft kind of um why stitch vertical if you wanted it to just if you wanted your you know you wanted it to just look a certain way so like um sometimes i think when priscilla stitches she'll do like the door vertical but the house horizontal just to give it different movement um so yeah, that's what I have today. I hope you join me tomorrow where we have special guest Teresa Kogut. I'll see you then.